Hi there, thanks for joining us. If you have been watching this series, we're working our way through 1 Corinthians and we're in chapter 7. Now I've been doing 1 Corinthians with my Bible class in Liverpool and we're a lot further on, we're just about finishing, we're in chapter 16. But we're in chapter 7 and this is a, quite a difficult passage of scripture, chapter 7. And the last time we did a recording, we looked at verses 17 to 24, which was about remaining as you are at the point of your conversion, live according to your call. But when we come to verses 25 to 40, we have a rather large section which we'll never deal with in one week. And it is teaching about the principle uh, or teaching that is given to those who are either unmarried, that is single, or they're widowed. Let me just read some of those verses to you. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my commandment, I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress, I say that it is good for a man so to be. Art thou bound unto a wife, seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife, seek not a wife. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned, and if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned, nevertheless such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. But this I say, brethren, the time is short, it remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoiced not, and they that buy as though they possessed not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. But I would have you without carefulness, he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Now we'll leave our reading there and we'll try and deal with that section and then we'll come to the later verses on another occasion. This passage would remind us not just of the importance of marriage, but the importance of freedom to serve God. And also we are going to learn in this section that those who are married must approach married life in the context of serving God in a way that would not restrict them. We need to be very careful as we read a passage like this because scripture doesn't contradict itself. And scripture has very clear teaching about husbands loving wives, Ephesians chapter 5 for instance, about wives uh, honouring their husbands, being subject to their husbands, about the relationship being harmonious, about serving God together. So when we read in a section like this that they should be people who weep as though they wept not, rejoice as though they rejoice not, and those types of things, we're learning that what the Apostle is teaching here is not that a man should neglect his responsibilities as a husband or a wife as a wife, but those responsibilities should be practised in light of the fact that the time is short, the Lord Jesus will be here soon and life has to be lived in light of the coming of the Lord Jesus. So this is not a commentary on how much a man should love his wife or how much a woman should live uh, in harmonious relationship with her husband. But this is really teaching us, as Paul is persuaded, that for some people, it would be better to remain single. So that's the thrust of the section. So he says, concerning virgins, those who are unmarried and have not been married, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. So Paul is saying, this is my opinion. Now, I wouldn't quite ditch it that easily and say, well, it's Paul's opinion, therefore it doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit has guided Paul to write this and for it to be included in Scripture. So it is of significance for us to note that God has included it here. And what is he saying? He's saying because of the present distress or necessity, the circumstances or the constraints that are put upon us, I really would think it would be good for a man to be single. Now, you may discuss as to what he means. Is he just saying in general terms, because the world is quite a difficult place, because sin is getting worse and worse, because the Lord Jesus will come soon, because there's so much to do for God that a Christian shouldn't get married, or maybe he's saying because of the circumstances that they found themselves because of the pressure of the Roman Empire and the persecution of Christians that it would be wiser at this stage to remain single. I don't know. I'll leave you to, to think about that. 
but he does say because of the current present circumstances necessity that is put upon them it would be good for a man to remain as he is as in single and so he says in verse 27 are you bound to a wife seek not to be loose are you loose from a wife seek not a wife now he's really using general terms some people would use this verse to say that you know there is a possibility that a person out of their understanding of this verse um, to to get divorced but I think he's really using general terms here and he's saying are you in marriage don't seek to get out of it and you wouldn't take your wife's life so he's saying are you bound to your wife seek not to be loosed are you loosed from a wife I don't think he's really saying are you divorced he's just saying are you not in that marriage relationship whether because you're single or because you're widowed then seek not a wife that's his advice. So this is teaching for singles, really, because he's saying that it is good because of the current circumstances. And we'll see a little later in the chapter. He's saying it would be good to free yourself up to serve God effectively as a single person. But he says, if you marry, you haven't sinned. He's addressing the man. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. He addresses the woman. Nevertheless, he says, both will have a lot of trouble. And what he means is there'll be pressures, there'll be difficulties, there'll be demands upon their life. But he says, I, I spare you. What he really wants them to understand from verse 29, verse 31 and verse 35, and I'll finish with this, is that the time is short. We have to live lives in light of our circumstances, not to neglect our wives, but we have to behave in light of the demands that are upon us to tell people about the Lord Jesus to live a godly life in this world. So he says time is short. Verse 33, he says that the world is passing. Sorry, verse 31, should I say. Um, the fashion of this world passeth away. And verse 35, he says to them, you know, you want to be able to attend to the Lord without distraction. Now we'll come back to this passage, but it's teaching that there are times in life when either you need to remain single if that's your calling, or those who are married need to live lives that are devoted to serving God, not to neglect their wife, but to behave appropriately for their circumstances. Now that's not quite such an easy passage, and neither is the rest of the chapter, but we'll come back to it in due course. Thanks for watching.